When I was a boy, I enjoyed playing video games. I started with an Atari 2600, then bought a Nintendo Entertainment System, then a Nintendo Game Boy, and finally a Super Nintendo. I used to play mainly on weekends, usually only for an hour or two. During the week, I would come home from school, do my homework, and then go outside and play. Playing outside was always a better option than playing video games. If the weather was bad, of course, playing a video game was a good option, but that's all it was. I don't recall sitting in front of the TV all day long just playing video games, and even if I wanted to, my mum probably told me to turn it off and go outside for a while. Being addicted to video games was simply not a thing back then. I don't recall any children who didn't want to go outside and play with their friends. By the time I had played the Super Nintendo for a year or so, around 1994 I believe, I was no longer interested in video game consoles. I was more interested in computing and programming, so my parents ended up buying our first PC. I still played games on it, but mainly used it for other things. Around 1995 or 1996, some of my friends were out buying the very popular Sony PlayStation. It was an immediate success selling millions of machines across the world, but I was just not interested in it. Actually, since then, I've never been tempted to buy a new console. For whatever reason, I'm just not interested in them. But this didn't mean I was, wasn't still interested in gaming, not by a long shot. Early Addiction Over the years, I've gone through periods of playing lots of computer games, especially during periods of loneliness. During my first year in Japan, I recall buying a new custom-made computer and playing lots of Civilization 3 and Counter-Strike. Civ 3 was a great game but even for a relatively small map, you needed to invest lots of hours to finish it. I remember spending all day, maybe 8 to 10 hours, playing a single game and then feeling immensely guilty afterwards. However, I kept playing it every free day I had for probably about 2 or 3 months. It wasn't until a new flatmate moved in around 2002 that I realised the error of my ways. He was a guy from America who used to work for Microsoft and was a self-proclaimed ex-video game addict. Again, video game addiction wasn't really a thing back then, or wasn't really talked about, but he, he used the terminology. One evening, we sat down together to have a drink after work. He was talking about wasting his life away playing video games back in America and not experiencing his life. He started telling me how grateful his, he felt being able to live and experience Japan. He would go out walking every day with his video camera and explore all the nooks and crannies of Osaka. It was that very evening I realised that I had to stop playing computer games. I was wasting my life and achieving nothing except a new high score. Mass Addiction and MMORPGs I returned to Australia in 2003 and caught up with my old friends. They all had computers by now and were gaming fairly frequently, although they were still happy to go out and watch a movie or whatever. In late 2004, the monster online RPG World of Warcraft WoW, was released. Almost all my friends dived in and started playing it, although I was a bit hesitant. A couple of months went past, and I, I had only seen my friends a couple of times since they started playing. They pretty much only talked about WoW and how much they enjoyed it. They also talked about the great online social interactions they had with other users while playing. I became a bit jealous that their online WoW friends were becoming more important than me, so I thought I'd better sign up and give WoW a go. I'd been given a 30-day trial CD, so I installed WoW, made a character, advanced a few levels, and then met up with my friends online. They were so excited that I'd finally joined up. I played WoW for about a month, and then started having the same guilty feelings that I had previously in Japan. I felt like I was wasting my life and achieving nothing, so I quit. My friends weren't too happy, and none of them were willing to quit with me. They were having too much fun, and thought I was being a bit holier than thou. The next six months were very lonely. My friends were clearly addicted to WoW, and were not going out anymore except to work and have the occasional after-work drink. I decided that I had to go back to Japan if I wanted to relieve my loneliness, as I still had a few friends over there from my last stint. In 2005, I got a job in a junior high school working for the local government. I bought myself a new computer and a fast internet connection, so I spent a lot of time on the web. 
YouTube had just recently been released, so I spent a lot of my free time watching online videos. People were starting to talk about video game addiction, and there were a, ca a few cases of people dying from it, mainly in Korea and China. Xiong Seop Lee, a South Korean, died from playing StarCraft for 50 solid hours. Video game addiction was becoming deadly. Return to Sanity I came back to Australia in 2006 and was eager to catch up with my friends. But I couldn't believe it. They were all still playing WoW. At least they were willing to leave the house a little bit more, but the topic of conversation was always WoW. This went on for another couple of years. I was a bit depressed that everybody was playing video games so often. It wasn't until around 2008 that my friends finally started coming to their senses. One of my mates invited me over to his house one day and told me about how guilty he was feeling. He had wasted the last three or four years of his life, ignored his health, friends and family. He quit cold turkey and started exercising again. Another one of my friends followed suit, but many others c continued to play. It was at that time I decided to go live and work in China, where I met my future wife. Anyway, since then, my friends have been going on and off the wagon. I think they are all fighting the urge not to go and play the latest game, but they often can't resist. I know they really do want to quit, but I think they feel bored with their lives and gaming makes them feel, at least temporarily, a little bit happier. I guess this could be said about any addiction. People feel unfulfilled in their lives, so turn to an activity where they can find some solace. I've always had a love-hate relationship with computer games, and occasionally fall off the wagon and play a game for three or four days. However, now that I have children, I quickly snap out of it and realise that there is more to life than living in an imaginary world. I hope listeners who suffer from an addiction can find the strength to quit. I know it's hard, but luckily we live in an age where plenty of support is available. Just do a search for video game addiction online and you'll find a ton of results. Please place your own stories of addiction in the comments section below.